it is certainly possible to create and edit a video using titles and other content that is built into Final Cut Pro 10. However, most projects are going to be built using video clips, still images, music, and other content that's not inside of Final Cut. So you need to import that media in order to start using it to build your projects. In this video, we are going to look at the media import window and start discussing how to use it to organize your content as you bring it in to Final Cut. Before I dive into that window, I'm going to do a quick shortcut, which is Option Command D, D for dock, to hide the dock at the bottom of the screen. This gives me another inch or so of screen real estate. I'm then going to hold the Option key and click on the green circle at the top left of Final Cut. What this will do is expand the window to fill that empty space at the bottom. You can do this if you want. I find it's helpful to have as much screen real estate as possible. Then, under the File menu, go to Import, and then choose Media. Or you can use the shortcut Command-I. And this is going to bring up the Media Import window which is divided into three sections. The left column shows our sources. The middle column is going to show the media of the selected source. And then the column on the right is where you can select options for the media you're going to import. And we're going to dissect each of these. So first, on the left column, you have a list of sources. And your list may look different than mine. But here's how mine is broken up. First, we have an area for cameras. I have an iMac with an external display connected to it. So I see the built-in FaceTime HD camera that's built into my iMac, and on my connected display, it also has a built-in camera called the iSight camera. If I click on either of those cameras, I can start importing video live from either of those cameras. Below the cameras is a list of devices, and these are devices that the computer recognizes. So for example, if I have media stored on my external storage drive, my external hard drive, I can select that device and choose what media I want to import. Below that is the Macintosh HD. This is the built-in storage on my iMac. And for example, I know I have content stored on the desktop that I want to import. So I could click on Macintosh HD and then use this middle column to navigate to the Users folder to my user called Final Cut Pro Help, and then there's the desktop. And I can double click on it, and I see a folder called Overtime. And that's the media we're going to be using in this tutorial. So I will want to import all of this Overtime content. However, I could do see another section here I want to call out called Favorites. And these are favorite locations that you may want to import from. So you do have the desktop and your home folder listed. But if you find a folder that you frequently import media from, just right click or control click on that folder and you can mark it as a favorite location. Now at any point when I bring up this media import window, I can just click on overtime and it goes right to that folder. Taking a look at another source before we start importing, I've connected my GoPro Hero 5 session camera. And notice that camera shows up in this left column. I did not have to refresh the window or do anything else. Just when I connected it, it showed up. I can click on the camera, and then on the right side, it shows me a list of files on that camera. Some of these files are videos that I can see right in here. Others are video files, but maybe they didn't get recorded correctly, so they're showing up as blank files. Depending on the type of camera you have, you may be able to live preview that content right inside this window. At the top, you can see the camera is selected. I have some navigation arrows to go back to the previous folder I was looking at. And I can also, on the right side, choose whether I want to see just videos, photos, or all clips together. So that's a way that you can start to narrow down what type of content you see. In addition, at the lower right corner of this middle column, you'll see some various ways to display this content. So I can change the appearance of the current view, which allows me to change, for example, the size of the clips. I can also zoom in or zoom out of the clips. I can choose if I want to see waveforms of these clips, if they have audio included. 
And I have a really important checkbox here. This is hide imported clips. And Final Cut does a pretty good job of recognizing when you've already imported media. And in this case, we have an empty event, so it's not gonna change anything. But if you're importing frequently from the same camera, or maybe from your iPhone, for example, this is a great way to hide the content that has already been added to your current event. And then the button to the left of that is the way to change the view. So right now we're viewing film strips, but I can click on this button to change it to a list of clips. And this list can be very helpful as it displays a lot more data for each of these clips. Similar to working in the Finder or another app, you can click on any of these columns to sort based on that column. So as an example, if I want to organize based on the largest files, I can click on size, and now it's sorting with the smallest file on the top and the largest one on the bottom. These columns as well, you can control click or right click on the columns, and you'll see a list of the data available. We're only seeing a small set, which has the check marks next to the ones we're currently seeing, of all of the rest of them that can show up here. So it's very common that you'll want extra media. Maybe you wanna see the video frame rate, for example. You can do that, enable the frame rate, and now that's a column that's gonna be displayed at the top here. So let's go over to our overtime media and take a look at this folder, because this is the actual content we're gonna to want to import. This folder is broken up into four, really five parts of content that came from editstock.com. Because of how large the files are, that's why it's broken up into these different folders. But I can navigate through these folders to see what's in them. So for example, the part one folder, PT1, includes the completed cut, it includes some of the scenes, and we can go to the 000 scene, and this shows some of the original content that was used. Luckily, EditStock has organized this content into these folders, but I can still go on and click on any of these clips to see the video at the top. And we see our first film strip here at the bottom, which I can just scrub across. I'm not clicking or anything, I'm just hovering the arrow across the little timeline down here to scrub through that clip. And in this case, they set where the staple remover is gonna be, and they kind of frame the shot where it's gonna go. And then we see the actual cut start about here. And then the remover comes down, it squeezes on that staple to remove it and then takes it away and that's the end of the cut for that little clip there. Very short, nothing too complicated, but look at how fast we're able to preview this content. And yes, this is stored on the desktop so it's gonna load a little bit faster than on some memory cards, but you can still load and preview content from many cameras and other cards before you even import it. That's one of the very powerful features of Final Cut Pro 10 is its ability to load and preview this content. You can use the, the uh, controls here to play the clip in real time if you want to. You can jump it to the previous edit, meaning it's gonna go to the beginning of this clip, or you can jump to the end of it. And that's how you can navigate between these clips to start previewing them. Um, let's see, one other interface thing I do wanna point out, now that we're in this list view, in the lower right corner, we do see our little appearance menu. And just keep an eye on this because you'll notice now we do get the options to show those waveforms. And they're actually gonna load up down here at the bottom of this clip. So as you have clips with audio, you can display that. And depending on which view you're using, those options will change. So don't hesitate to go down there and see and, and work with these different controls that are here. So this one too, this little number on the left side, if you haven't noticed this, shows us how long the clip is roughly. So this is about a 10 second clip. I can go here and see it's a 37 second clip, 15 seconds, we're able to see each of these clips here. So that's an overview of selecting clips that you will wanna import into Final Cut and how you can preview those clips. The, actually one last thing here, depending on what's selected, You'll notice over on the right side, we have an import selected button. So because I clicked on that one clip, it's only gonna import that one selected clip. I can hold the command key and click on multiple clips, or I can click on one clip, hold the shift key, and click on another, and it'll select everything in between. 
And I can even hold Command and click on some clips now to unselect a few. So all of these ways of selecting are not new to Final Cut. This is something you can do in any app. But I do want to point that out because you can use those uh, selection methods to select different clips. Otherwise, if you know you just want to import everything that's in there, you can unselect your selection. So I'm going to close the part-time one. And I have some empty space down here. And when I click on that, nothing's selected. So you'll notice this button changes to an import all, meaning it's going to try to import everything in this overtime folder. But we're going to have a couple options there on the right side. So in the next video, we're going to take a look at those options before you actually start to import this content.